years back and was part of Illyrian colonization here and my own evolution was much older uh, by virtue of being Illyrian which a lot of people here on earth are and I was somehow compelled probably to come many times I've had extensive dreams thoughts images and visions about Billy other life forms and this information it's almost as if I've always kind of known this stuff I really didn't even have to study it very well it was all kinda of like I was always part of it so this may be the case with a lot of people where they've been stimulated by dreams in their subconscious uh, and somehow feel drawn to this information very comfortable to this information or whatever so we are probably receiving broadcasts from the Pleiadians and are among these 17,422 people that they're talking about. By the way, none of these people, they say, are in government or in uh, political positions. So apparently they have some control over who receives this, too. Otherwise, the probably somewhere in government there would be some uh, some people picking this up. So they must be a little uh, concerned about who is actually receiving it. So it's just not random broadcasting. Uh, they also mention that the uh, splinter group of the Pleiadians, which we're going to hear more about later on, there is a race of people called the Fath, B-A-F-A-T-H. This is a splinter group uh, split off from the Pleiadians about 75,000 years back. They're human just the same as the Pleiadians, but the Pleiadians kind of regard them as terrorists. During a very violent war many years back, they split off, and there's hardly any of them left, but the ones that are left are here on Earth. And they are sometimes, uh, in the Billy Meyer case, referred to as the Giza intelligence. I'll tell you more about them later on, but these are a renegade group of ETs that have, and some of them live under a large cavernous area below the Giza pyramid, which is why they're called the Giza intelligence. And like the Pleiadians, they are far older, more evolved, and have very strong mental abilities. Their, um, their technical abilities aren't as strong as they used to be because um, they haven't grown. They've been forced to stay here on Earth, and they, their technology has not advanced very much, but they still have the flying beam ships and are quite often seen in the sky. The reason it's brought up here is that while uh, Patal was explaining that 17,422 people on Earth are receiving thoughts and feelings from the Pleiadians, 723 people at that time were under the influence of the Bafath. Now, when I say influence, the Bafath are instilling thoughts and ideas into people in order for control. We'll hear more about the Bafath later on. But the Bafath primarily have tried to seize control of the planet Earth on many occasions um, through this mental control. They have not openly tried to take control of the planet, one for two reasons. They couldn't get by the Pleiadians. Plus, their technology is not very advanced any longer. And while they have very strong mental abilities, and they do have flying discs, um, these discs are susceptible even to our rockets and missiles now. We could shoot them down that apparently their ships are quite old, uh, they are not a very great technology, and uh, pr apparently they don't have the speed or the protective screens that the Pleiadian ships do, and they can be shot down. So they've taken to trying to take over the planet through mind control and have on many occasions uh, controlled certain people and world leaders for certain events. They mention out of the 17,000 that two people that had had open contacts that were very legit were Daniel Fry in America and someone named Victor Schauberger who had just passed away at that time. And they went on to comment to Billy about what a very advanced being Daniel Fry was, who a very old spirit, much like uh, Billy himself. And uh, they painted a picture of this man as being very understanding, very loving, uh, very knowledgeable about creation and what's going on and that uh, apparently Daniel Fry is quite old now and I don't think he's really out on the speaking trail any longer but he uh, is one that Bata says is genuinely legit. Billy Ask also uh, uh, we have life on earth, cities, people and so forth um, where's the next closest planet that has human life on it like ours? Patal remarked that it really wasn't that far away, that just five light years away, there were several planets with human life on it, just like ours. Uh, actually, uh, technically, they were 117 years in advance of us, and that they even frequently visit Earth. Apparently, these were descendants of people who, after the great explosion and war of Atlantis, had uh, kind of exited and taken up life there, 
Uh, they had not advanced very rapidly. They weren't far in advance of us. They were on kind of on the beginning stages uh, of development of space travel. Their ships did not have the ability to jump into hyperspace. So consequently, they had space stations out in free space. It took them quite some time to get here to Earth. One of their problems is, and by the way, uh, Billy said he calls this planet Akart, A-K-A-R-T. Uh, one of the um, situations is that they frequently come here for food. Their planet, or at least one of them anyway, uh, Ptah says is overpopulated and has 23 billion people on it. We have 5 billion right now. So they have about five times as many people as we do. And he says their problem is that uh, like us, they become greatly overpopulated. We're too, we have too many people uh, for the food chain. We're putting too much stress on the planet as it is. There's plenty of space for everybody, but when you have this many people, it puts tremendous stress on the social system, which ours is rather poor, it's all based on money, greed, and power. So the more people you have, the tougher it is to control the system. We still have a system of economics, which is not designed for the general welfare. It's designed for the general welfare to keep them in line and to feed the rich people who designed the system. So in that respect, we're also overpopulated. And, of course, the food chain. Already we're into genetically engineering foods and so forth. Uh, and, of course, we affect nature because we're out of control with our technology. Well, this planet has 23 billion people on it, five times almost the population of the planet Earth. And they're coming here regularly for food. Uh, Pata mentioned that most of the time when they come here, their ships are seen from time to time, pictures are taken of them. But they don't take our food, they generally take seeds and uh, plants and so forth back to their world and, and grow them and grow their own food and so forth. Apparently they're a very kind, peaceful race, uh, and uh, they're not warlike at all. We have nothing to fear from them, and we probably will have no open contact with them for quite some period of time. This led into an explanation Pata was saying that uh, probably around the year 2000, it's quite possible that we will probably have open contact with another race. He says that this, when this uh, comes about, that this race that's coming here will be human similar to us. They'll look a little different. And that they will broadcast across space to the planet Earth that they're coming. There will be a lot of pandemony. There will be a lot of fear. There will be a lot of panic. But it won't be uh, justified because they'll actually, when they get here, turn out to be a very peaceful race. Uh, no problems for us really at all, except that we're going to have to wake up to the fact that there really are ETs out there. Their ship will be very large egg-shaped, not a dish shape like uh, the UFOs we're used to seeing, but it'll be a very, very large ship and it'll look like an egg. And Billy uh, asks, uh, well, where's it going to land? Who are they going to contact? And Patas says, well, uh, the natural place is America. And Billy says, America? Why always America? What's this thing with everything happening in America? And Patas says, well, America is the most logical place. One, because of the government, and the other is the fact that they will be concerned about their arrival causing panic on the planet, and that the American people are more open, more willing to accept UFOs, and by the time that time period gets here, remember we're speaking now in 75, so it'll be 25 years, he says, by the time that happens, the American people will be greatly opened up to the idea of extraterrestrial contact, and there's far less chance of panic in America compared to other countries. Well, before they end here, before they drop Billy off, Billy, uh, one more time, is pressed by Pata that, uh, to go out and do public speaking and to get this information out that they've been uh, watching Billy, and even though Billy has been saying all along that he's going to do this, that he's writing, going to write lectures, and he's going to go out and talk, he still has not done it. And Billy keeps saying he's just not good at it. He, he does not want to do the public speaking thing, and that he's trying to get uh, Hans Jacob, uh, his friend, to do that. And Pataz in agreement.